Uh, here we are in the winter. I'm preparing to do a camp out without a tent in the winter. Some may say it's intimidating, others it's uh, just another day. But what's it like to actually camp in the winter without a tent and the psychological and physical comfort? Well, one of my viewers and uh, hopefully subscribers here. Let me uh, see here, let me log in. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, all right. So I got a question from one of my viewers. It's about uh, winter camping without a tent and this person's name is FC, uh, two letters. Hi Aaron, I'm so happy I found your channel. Please keep making videos. I'm a female and new to winter camping. I felt very inspired lately to try winter camping without a tent. I'm learning from your videos and looking forward to making this dream come true. FC, thank you very much for your question there. And, uh, I'm gonna try and inspire you with this because I have my full load out here, 30 pounds of gear, and that's uh, simply with a tarp tent, and I'm going to use my trekking poles as the, uh, the holders for my tarp tent, and I'm gonna head off not too far, but I've got a couple of recommendations when you first start camping without a tent in the winter. First is to put your glasses back on because it's kind of blinding, and... Uh, yeah, much better. Second is don't go far. If you think everything's going to go sideways, build confidence by going to a place where you can totally, if everything goes sideways, uh, you get soaked, you're freezing, you get covered in snow, whatever happens, don't go far away from your vehicle. I mean, not even a mile. Go 100 yards, or I mean, I've even gone to Sequoia National Park and camp like... Phew, almost right next to my vehicle when I was first trying this out without a uh, tent. There was nobody there, so it was no big deal. So that's a consideration too, is just don't go far and put yourself in a situation where you could get in real trouble, get frostbite or get injured. Right now it's April in the uh, Northern Rockies here and you can see it's still snowing. So that's another thing is don't go in the deep winter, go later in the season, like March, April, when you know it's gonna be warm but there's still snow on the ground where you can actually do some snow camping and you're not sleeping in the mud. Hey by the way viewers check it out look at this hat this is designed by Kelly Gaffney at the Kiki Gallery it's a custom hand knit hat this design is called the Fauna hat pretty pretty sweet very warm I believe the yarn is um was it the who is it the polka dot sheep from Whitefish Montana great shop there so Thank you to Kelly Gaffney at the, the Kiki Gallery, thekikigallery.com. Uh, sweet, sweet design. You can actually make your own. She sells the patterns. But FC, a couple other considerations before I literally head off into the woods here and show you my tarp tent setup and how I'm going to sleep tonight. And then I'll record it and show you what it's like. But another consideration is just have confidence. Bring a extra warm bag. Don't go with a 30 degree bag thinking, oh, it'll only be 30 degrees. Because even though it's storming uh, on and off here, uh, the clouds are opening up. If a storm comes through and then clears off, the temperature will plummet 10 to 20 degrees and you will freeze. I don't want you to freeze because yeah, freezing is not enjoyable. I've done that where I took my Western Mountaineering Megalite, uh, which is rated for 25 to 30 degrees. Fahrenheit, they're about zero to negative four degrees C. And I took it down to five degrees Fahrenheit or like minus 13 degrees C. Whoo boy, I froze. Uh, that was a very cold night. It survived, or I survived. I didn't lose my fingers or toes. Every time I moved, I was cool. I eventually did get sleep, but it could have been a better experience. So definitely make sure that your sleeping bag is rated at least 10, if not 20 degrees warmer than your conditions. That said, if you've got a minus 20 bag and you gotta get a minus 40 bag, that's a whole other story. But for just basic winter camping, unless you're in the deep freeze locations like a Minnesota, North Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, uh, you get a little more mild winter. And then uh, go out, don't get far from your vehicle and uh, don't take too much risk just to build up the camp confidence so you can have your dream experience of winter camping without a tent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off and uh, going to wander through the woods and find a good location here, stomp it out, and I'll show you my campsite that I think I found and uh, give you the experience of what it's like.
Right. Come to the campsite I scouted out a little bit before. Sweet! Here we go. This is where I'm going to do my winter camping without a tent. Perfectly normal. People think I'm crazy, but you're covering a little bit of snow. <laughs> so, as you can see here, one of the keys about winter camping without a tent is having protection. No, not that kind of protection, but protection from the elements. With my Hilleberg Namage 2, I can sleep on the plains of Antarctica, no problem. This makes my head look lumpy. Okay, I want to make sure I make Kelly's hat look good here. <laughs> there we go. Um, but make sure you sleep somewhere that's well protected, good and level, and you stomp the heck out of the site with snowshoes. Make sure it's totally level. Make sure there aren't any sticks or pokey things sticking up so you have a stabbing event in the middle of the night. And like I said, don't go too far from your vehicle and it'll build a lot of confidence because if you, oh my gosh, quick, just go get in the vehicle. It'll take forever to warm up. I had that happen before on a camping trip with my brother. We thought, oh, this is great. We froze, the ground was too cold for our shoes. We sat in the car for an hour running it and idle. Never warmed up. Oh, that was a cold night. <laughs> so one of the things too, is if you live in a winter location, where you get snow in your yard or you have access to somebody who has snow in the yard, literally go in their backyard and camp in the winter. That way you can immediately run into the house if something goes wrong, but you can have the courage to say, hey, it's okay, I'm not hurt, and I'm not gonna run the house, I'm gonna tough it out here and have a good time. So that's another way to do it of, hey, I want to go winter camping without a tent. Take a super low risk approach before you come out to the woods doing this sort of thing. So what I'm gonna do now is stomp this side out, get my poles set up and uh, set up my tarp tent. I'm gonna use some of the knots featured in my book, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, to get it set up and get ready for the coming night because it's coming. Oh, one other thing. Make sure you do not camp directly under a tree with a lot of snow in a tarp tent. Because if the wind blows and the snow falls down, that weight of snow can destroy your tarp tent and potentially injure you. So just be mindful, you need some open space for falling snow from heavyweight sources, not in the side of the sky, but watch out for that. <laughs> Got my campsite stomped out here. I'm gonna get my pack off and get the process of Getting my tarp out and setting up, I'll put a couple little video clips in here and show you what it's like. So I've got my stake down there, buried, just got a basic square knot there, and taut line, but that's not doing anything with square knot. I got a couple taut line hitches here. So I can tension it, and on the other side, same sort of thing. Taut line hitches allow me to tension it. Well, this guy is a square knot, all featured in my The Most Crucial Knots to Know book. Another taut line hitch. All I need to do is stake out the four corners here, and I will have my tent. Or my tarp tent, I guess you could say. Here we go. I just need to tighten it up a bit. And I will have a space. Oh. So it's not too bad. It's not super uncomfortable. It's not awesome, but you are camping in the snow without a tent. Uh, so I just need to tighten up the lines. And we'll be good to go for the next step. All right, got everything tensioned out. The tarp tent looks pretty good. Going to set up my ground tarp and then my uh, sleeping bag and work on my air mattress here and uh, keep things going. Here 
Here up my air mattress, lay it out, put my sleeping bag out, make sure nothing falls on it, and next step. <laughs> All right, well, FC, so far so good. I got fire up dinner here, I'm getting hungry. It's uh, not that exciting, but I'll do that. Cause it's already, it's about an hour, hour and a half towards sunset. It's starting to get pretty out here, maybe an hour towards sunset. And you start to think, oh, if you're really worried, bring bear spray. If uh, wh whatever, you know, wherever you might live. So it's a consideration, but I gotta get dinner started here because it takes a while to get that going. Boil the water, eat my freeze dried. I'm hungry. Woo! Have a good time. I'll, uh, I'll record a little at night and then hopefully in the morning. Come on. Woo! Flame on. <laughs> Never put your stove in the snow because that snow will get on the bottom and then put your stove out. Been there, done that too. Ooh, yeah. All right, dinner on the way. Ooh, dinner is served. Yeah, baby. All right, here we go. Yum yum! Whew. And after a half hour of gymnastics, I am in my tarp tent. Yeah, baby. Ooh, open snow. All right. That was brutal, but I'm in. Usually I don't have my shell jacket in here, but I gotta keep my camera warm, otherwise I can't film. That's inconvenient, kind of defeats the whole purpose. And yeah, it's, um, what time is it? Jeez, eight o'clock. Brutal. Gonna be another long night. Probably wake up at uh, eight, nine, 10, 11. Wake up at two, wake up at four, wake up at five, start praying for the sun to start lightening up. And the moment it does, start getting ready, get going, eat breakfast. And ski out of here. Oh. Tarp camping definitely adds a layer of challenge because you can't just throw things and know that they'll be contained. You do not want to have your socks out in the snow. Socks and snow are bad, along with everything else. So it takes a lot of extra care to do tarp camping. But you stay completely dry. Uh, one one uh, subscriber viewer said that uh, the uh, cowboy camped in a minus 20 bag and uh, got a little frost covered. That is the thing about the tarp, is it prevents that falling condensation from condensing on the sleeping bag. Especially because I've got the microfiber bag going, I did not bring my Gore Wind Stop, because it's a little bit, I wouldn't say too big. It's plenty warm. This bag is way more than adequate for these conditions, but I also want to protect it, because I'm going on Denali, I don't want to damage it at all. So I'll just deal with the microfiber bag and that's okay. So this is the uh, long part of the snow camping experience is the night and you hear the owls and the chipmunks and squirrels running around. You think, whoa, yeah. So if you're worried about it, have bear spray handy somehow. And uh, that's, that's probably your best defense because it'll take care of any animal in North America. And I'm starting to get cold. So good night and I'll uh, see you in the morning. Oh boy. snowing. Yay! Well, that is... Let's see down just a touch. 
That is fun. Of course, you gotta wake up four or five times to go to the bathroom, but whatever. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully this gives you an idea what it's like to uh, solo camp in a tarp with no tent in the winter and snow and it's snowing. It's very nice. Um, it's actually not too bad. Last night the uh, clouds cleared out and it got pretty cold, probably 10 degrees Fahrenheit and that's probably, uh, whatever it is, that's 8 degrees Celsius, or minus 8 degrees Celsius, something like that. Maybe, maybe minus 12 degrees Celsius. And then, uh, bathroom a bunch of times, finally stayed out for three or four hours and it's now Ooh, lazy. 6.45. Oh, excuse me. But, there you go. As you can see, I'm sporting the most powerful hat in the universe. I've also, somewhere under this hat pile, I've got my uh, Kiki Gallery hat, the Fauna hat. Uh, somewhere, maybe. Designed by Kelly Gaffney, links below. Uh, I'm not huge differences. This hat by Mouseworks. Love this hat. Uh, the experience of actually camping in a tarp is a lot different because you can't just toss things around. Like you know, you, you drop some stuff in your tent, you dig around. You can you can be very sloppy, and it's no big deal. But in a tarp. You do not want to do that because you wake up with frozen socks that you won't be able to deal with or your water bottle will fall out and be frozen. Um, you could have animal problems, who knows? You don't want that to happen. All right, well, I gotta get up and eat breakfast and get out of here. Hopefully this has been helpful, hope you've Got a little bit of what it's like to tarp camp in the snow. It's fun. Definitely a different experience than a tent. <laughs> uh, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links in the description to my books Antarctic Tears, Lost at Winnie Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold. The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, the most crucial knots to know, 50 photography hotspots of Jackson Hole, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as my show, Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more of fun stuff like this.